Hi, I'm Robert, and in this video I will give a short talk about experimental realization of quantum oblivious transfer, or OT. This project is a collaboration between Harriot Watt University, the University of Edinburgh, and Palatsky University. You can find the related paper on archive. Please find the link in the description of the video. Let's first introduce the basic concept of oblivious transfer. Alice have two bits, x0 and x1. Bob picks bit b, for example b equals 0. Then they communicate. Bob receives bit xb based on his choice of b. Here x0. Bit b should remain hidden to Alice as well as bit x1 should remain hidden to Bob. Cheating parties would like to reveal the hidden information. Ideally, they could only guess. The security of OT is our topic here. Oblivious transfer is a communication or cryptographic primitive. Importantly, OT is universal for secure multiparty computation. For example, it is useful for electronic voting or signing documents. See provided references. There are similar tasks implementable by OT, bit commitment and coin flipping. It is known that OT is not secure in the context of information theory in classical domain. Other assumptions, like computational hardness, are required. What about quantum domain? There are communication tasks which could be secured with quantum physics. Namely, quantum key distribution. The QKD uses interesting features of quantum physics, like inherent randomness, strong correlations, and our inability to perfectly clone states. These features serve to secure the communication. It is reasonable to ask whether we can use them to secure other tasks as well. It is, for example, known that weak coin flipping could be implemented arbitrarily secure. On the other hand, it is impossible to completely secure bit commitment. There is some probability of successful cheating. We know that it is also impossible to do oblivious transfer perfectly. But the cheating probability is still an open question. The formal definition follows the basic idea. Note that parties can abort communication. We are mainly concerned about cheating probabilities A and B. Supremas in the definitions here and here are taken over all cheating strategies. These probabilities expresses the ability of parties to reveal what should remain hidden. To keep it simple, we speak of a cheating probability which is a maximum of A and B. According to the provided reference, any quantum OT protocol can be cheated at least with 66% probability. This is the lower bound. On the other hand, the best known OT protocol has 75% cheating probability. This is an upper bound. Any better protocol would decrease the upper bound. There is a gap the green area, between what is known to be achievable here and, which, and what is known to be impossible here. Let me introduce a variant of OT. It is like the previous case with one difference. The receiver, Bob, no longer chooses which bit he is going to learn. In other words, the choice of his bit, C, is done randomly. 
This variant is equivalent to non-random OT. It only requires classical communication to implement OT with semi-random OT. There is a proof in our paper on archive. We use following generic protocol to study the security. It is most general protocol for OT. It is inspired by Kitaev's coin flipping protocol. Alice and Bob have their own quantum states and they communicate with another state M. They sequentially perform unitary operations U and V on their system and system M. Finally, Bob measures and he obtains bit C and value XC. Cheating probabilities are related to respective fidelity F of the states in the protocol when it is executed honestly. We use the general framework to analyze the lower bound. Our analysis reproduces the 66% lower bound. The lower bound increases from 66% to approximately 74.9% if the protocol states are pure and symmetric. Then we also consider specific protocols that under conditions decrease the upper bound. Specifically, we have a protocol that achieves 75%. It is like the previous state-of-the-art protocol, but our protocol is easier to implement and has lower cheating probability for the second party. Previously, both parties could cheat with 75% probability, while in our case it is 75% and 73%. Here. We introduce a specific protocol for semi-random oblivious transfer. This protocol is based on an ambiguous measurements. Alice sends to Bob one of four quantum states based on her choice of x0 and x1. The encoding table is on the left. Normally, Bob measures the states in Zx basis and according to the outcome, he receives Xc. Bob randomly chooses a small fraction of positions that he uses for testing. For those positions, he asks Alice to reveal the state she sent. Then he checks whether this is compatible with his measurements in Xx or ZZ basis. Based on the measurement outcome, Bob can abort the transmission. With such measurements, Bob restricts what states can Alice send. Bob would like to check whether Alice is sending valid protocol states and whether she is lying about what she sent. The testing forces Alice to send a state that passes this test limiting the ways she can deviate. As we will see later, the states that Alice can prepare and that are guaranteed to pass the test are not necessarily the ideal state she is supposed to send in an honest execution. However, restricting the Alice's states to those that pass the test limits Alice's cheating strategies as we will elaborate later and in the full paper. Let's see how it works. Top left plot shows probabilities of Bob's outcomes with respect to the Alice's input. There are two possibilities here, here, here for each Alice's choice, these four choices. This is where the randomness in choice of C comes from. Bob translates the measurement outcome according to the table on the right. For example, when the outcome is 0 and plus, it means that C equals 0 and XC equals 0. In the testing mode, 
there is a single possible outcome for each of four possible input states. Let's see what happens when Alice naively cheats. Instead of the protocol states, she would instead send, for example, eigenstates of Bob's measurement operators. In such case, Bob has only a single possible outcome for each of those four states. Alice is therefore sure about Bob's choice C. For a large number of communication rounds, this probability goes up to 100%. This was a naive attempt. Few slides later, I will show how Alice can cheat without being detected. We did a proof of principle test of this protocol. We did not realize the protocol completely from terminal to terminal. We rather measured the relative detection frequencies of various cases and used the information to learn how experimental imperfections influence the protocol. Our experiment utilizes single photons and simple linear optical components like wave plates, beam splitters and single photon detectors. Let's start with qubit encoding. Alice encodes the qubits into path and polarization degree of a single photon signal. We generated the photon using continuous wave spontaneous parametric down conversion. For now, the other photon, idler, is used just to herald photon generation. With wave plates, we first encoded the first qubit into polarization state and then translated this qubit into path qubit, top or bottom, using a beam displacing calcite crystal here. Then we erased the information about polarization with other wave plates and used a pair of additional wave plates to encode the Alice's second qubit into polarization of both beams. The table with diagrams shows you the details. For example, the combination of Alice's bits 0 and 1 would result into preparation of equal superposition of photons in both arms in diagonal polarization. We sequentially prepared these four states and performed measurements on Bob's side. The state projection is analogical to the preparation. The components are the same as in preparation, but in a reversed order. In the actual experiment, we only sequentially set all projections of interest and counted detection events. This was enough to measure relative frequencies of Bob outcomes. To implement the protocol this way, one would have to do a four-port detection. We would only need to use more optical components. This is an example how we could do it. The experimental results are here plotted for the case without cheating. The plots are organized as before. They show the probabilities of Bob's outcomes in transfer and testing regime of the protocol. Outlines represent the theoretical values and blue bars measure the data. Error bars represent one standard deviation. There is a small contribution of parasitic counts which causes that Bob gets the wrong bit value. The probability of Bob getting the right value was over 99%. Similarly, experimental imperfections causes Bob to falsely detect cheating. In this case, he would abort in about 1% of cases.
Here we give what happens if Bob deviates from honest execution and attempts to learn as much as possible. Then he does not measure in basis he is supposed to Zx. Specifically, when we experimentally realize his optimal cheating strategy, we get roughly 72% cheating probability, which is slightly less than the theoretical value. For security purpose, Alice cannot rely on this value since she cannot assume that Bob has imperfect devices. But we illustrate in practice how the theoretically best attacking strategies can be implemented. Instead of plus, minus, zero and one, Bob projects onto states Xi and Zeta, illustrated in the cross section of block sphere here. This is called a square root measurement or minimum error measurement. It is well known approach for state discrimination. The idea behind this cheating strategy can be seen from the graph. In the previous case, Bob had two possible outcomes for each Alice's state that hided the other bit value. Now he has theoretically three possibilities here, here, and here, for each Alice's combination of bits. But now, one of the possibilities is significantly higher. The blue bars show the measured relative frequencies. Due to various experimental imperfections, we are slightly off the theory. Let's now discuss Alice's cheating strategy. Bob's testing limits what states can Alice use. However, there are states like sigma, which will always pass the test. Measurement of the ancilla in the Z basis would force Bob's part to a honest protocol state, either 0, 0 or plus plus. She can also measure her part in another basis. Specifically, she can measure the ancilla in X basis. If a qubit is a test qubit, she measures in the Z basis and she appears honest. If the qubit is not tested, she measures in the X basis and then she is able to guess Bob's bit with 75% probability. This way, her actions cannot be detected by the testing phase. This strategy achieves the best guessing probability while remaining undetected. Alice's cheating strategy requires more experimental effort because it involves generation of such entangled states. Alice now used the Euler photon as a second part of a qubit, qubit system. She entangles the initially separable photons with use of logical quantum gates. The first gate, controlled phase shift, operates only on the qubit. The other control phase shift gate entangles both photons by means of two photon interference, like in the Milburn and Laflamme protocol. Such gate sequence prepares a state which is equivalent to sigma up to local unitaries. We apply them to finish the preparation. This is the experimental setup. The quantum gates are realized using wave plates and combination of single and two photon interference. We use Hong O Mandel effect on the central beam splitter to entangle signal and idler photons. To save experimental resources and to reduce experimental imperfections, we merge remaining single qubit unitaries into analysis part here and here. We did a quantum state tomography 
to find out the fidelity of the prepared sigma state. It exceeded 90%. Alice guessed Bob Spit C correctly with 77% probability. It however comes at the cost of the increased probability, 6%, that Bob reveals the cheating attempt. Again, the theory is compared to the experiment in the plots. The left plot shows how probable it is that Alice's guess matches Bob's bit C here and here. The right plot shows the probabilities of Bob's outcome in the testing phase. This was only proof of principle experiment. In this talk, we presented both the honest execution and the optimal attacks for semi-random oblivious transfer protocol. To judge the practicality of the protocol, we need to see the experimental requirements of the honest trans. Although we cannot rely on the experimental difficulty for attacks, showing that the optimal attacks are hard is actually good news for the practical security. In principle, the protocol could be achieved with a setup for BB84 protocol. Honest Alice only needs to send two qubits or one qubit, and there have been great successes in QKD, including fiber and free space transmission. In this sense, the scheme is feasible and practical. Bob's cheating strategy also does not require anything special, only projections to separable states. On the other hand, generation of sigma state using the presented method is impractical. For example, Alice probably would not have control over Bob's hardware to evaluate coincidences. Also, the presented generation method is highly probabilistic. But this is good for Bob, right? Okay, new quantum technologies like on-demand single photon sources and deterministic entanglement sources might change my opinion in the near future. To conclude, we investigated bound sort cheating. Namely, we theoretically increased the cheating probability lower bound for protocols that are using pure and symmetric states. We also proposed and tested experimentally a scheme for semi-random oblivious transfer. In terms of cheating probabilities, the scheme is as good as previously known scheme, but our scheme is implementable with BB84 setup. We believe therefore it is more easy to implement. In the experiment we also performed the cheating strategies, showing their feasibility. For more details, please look at our paper in archive. The link should be in the description of the video. Thanks for watching.